Ready? Today we're going to do section 2.5. Uh, the worksheet is on D2L, so hopefully you printed it out. And I'm actually going to start on the next to last page. And we're going to do this thing called creating a linear regression. Okay, in this chapter, we're doing things with lines and you all should know a lot of what's going on in chapter three. Should be a breeze, some of this stuff. Um, memorizing a distance formula, maybe so not, not so much, but hopefully it makes sense. A midpoint, yeah, that's just the average. And we had another one that was um, the slope. And that was the, uh, you know, y change in y over the change in x and things like that but i want to start with this next to last page and it says creating a model using linear regression and i'm going you're going whoa, whoa, whoa. um yeah what this is saying is if i'm given a whole bunch of dots can i find a line crazy all right so let's get back to where we were sorry about that folks I'm gonna to have to call Comcast again today. Not so happy. But we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna find a line that fits the data the best. Okay, so taking a look at the last page, we're actually gonna do a calculator event. And basically what we're doing is here's a whole bunch of data that has been collected. And we're gonna look at a line that fits that data the best. So if I said, I give you this, for example, this might be ours. And over here, this might be cost. And all these different jobs were done. And you could say, well, after uh, one, two, three, four hours, you know, you can find what cost is the best approximation of what's going on here. So in order to start, I got me a graphing calculator. And I'm hoping you can all see that. And uh, you're going, ooh, and ah, uh, and you know, I don't, I don't know about that but determine the equation for best fit. So all of these points are plotted over here. And what I'm saying is there's a line that's gonna be the best line to make predictions for all of these. And this is where all this algebra started from, you know, trying to come up with that line. So I'm gonna hit the stat button and I start to search and, and all of a sudden I do see the stat button right there. And then it says, then edit. Okay, so yeah, I'm on edit, so I'll just hit enter, and it's going to allow me to enter these values. So I'm going to do zero through eight, zero, one, oh, that's another zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then enter. And then over in this column, I'm putting in num the numbers 0.5, I'm going to put in 1.3, I'm going to put in 2.9, 2.4. A lot of you are gonna to have to take stats class. So you may be doing a lot of this type of thing in stats class. So it doesn't hurt to see it now. 7.7 .7 and 8.3. Uh-oh. And, oh, jeez. What did I hit again? Stat, edit, and I have values in here. I just needed this one yet, 8.3. Good, the calculator's a little bit forgiven. All right, so once all my data is entered, I'm gonna hit the stat button again, and then calc. So I hit the stat button again, and I'm gonna go over to calc, and under calc, I'm gonna see choose number four. I wanna create a linear regression, because I know my data looks like a line doesn't look like a quadratic. You know, we can talk about a quadratic. That's going to give me that y equals ax squared plus bx plus c equation. This is, this is um, yeah, this is a quadratic. Okay. All right. Once I have all, I want linear regression. I hit that. Okay. Then I want to hit the calculate. Okay. Then calc. Hit calculate. This will give me the equation. So I'm going to go down to calculate and hit enter and I get an equation. And again, this is the, the line that 
the distance between each point and the line is as small as possible. So I get an answer and here's the answer. Same as what's on the paper. This A and B, and you see how they write as the form Y equals AX plus B, okay? So we get this equation right here. Y equals 0.97 plus 0.3. So now if I come down, I come down here and I want to see the data and the line graph. I'm going to hit the Y equals key. That's up here at the top. Y equals key. And once I hit that, select stat plot, which I don't, I don't see stat plot here. Um, do, 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 above the Y equals key. Ah, so I needed second Y equals. I'm not doing a very good job of reading. I want stat plot one. So if I hit enter, I want to hit enter again so that it turns it on. We need to turn it on. And we can let it in blue. So now if I want to see it, let's see, then turn stat plot on, which we did, and select the graph type. So let's see what graph type did we want? We wanted it on. It looks like that first one, that dot and dot, and we hit everything right. And if I hit enter, excuse me, if I go back and do, so after I select the graph type, everything matches up. Okay, there's all kinds of stuff on these calculators when you get ready to do it. And then I want to actually graph it. So I'm going to hit um, Y equals. And I'm going to type in my equation 0.97 X. Now I need to find the X. So where is the X? Anybody see it? It's right here beside the alpha. There's my X, okay? Plus 0.3, and I wanna graph it. So I go up here to the right and hit graph, and there are my points, and here comes my line of best fit, okay? So it calculated a line according to the data. In, in math, we don't start with data and say, oh, we need a line and we need to learn all about the line. We just go right into the lines and don't really care why we're doing it. But this is why we're looking at the graph of a line. This is why we get started. We look at data and we wanna make predictions. So now if I came over to four and then I went up, I'd be able to find out what would be the best approximation because it's what would land on that line. So I would be play, plugging four in for X. I, and again, I'd love to do lots and lots and lots of stuff with this, but we just don't have time, you know, to come up with this. And, you know, again, I would lead you into why I think it should be this. And then I'm going to take that back and say, I'm even bored with Y's and X's. You know, that's for graphs. But what if it was in real life? You know, and the cost was, and a plumber, he cost, he, you have to pay like $50 an hour for him to show up. And then once he shows up, it's $60 per hour. You know, now this is something you can work with. Because if you say, well, you work three hours, we know it's that original 50, that initial value, plus $60 for every hour would give you the cost. And this is why I like B plus MX. But anyhow, okay. <clears throat> Couple more formulas you probably are saying, yeah, I know this. First one is the point slope formula. Y minus Y equals M times X minus X. And you're going, yeah, okay, good, that's great, and so on, so on. But uh, let's see where that comes into play. Running through this pretty quick. Use the point slope formula to write an equation given the following conditions. So I say y e passes through negative 4, 2. Slope equals 2. And again, we know slope should be written as a fraction because I can do the rise over the run. I go to negative 4, 1, 2, 3. Four and up two, there's that first point. 
And then I'm going to do a rise of two, one, two, and a run of one, and I get a second point. And my second point, the first point was negative four, two, and I rise two and run one. I'm now at one, two, three, one, two, three, four. So my second point is now negative three, four. Okay, so that's good to have. Now, it wants us to come up with an equation given a point and the slope. So this second point, even though it exists, is only gonna help me drawing my line right now, what the graph would look like. The equation, they say, okay, given the point and the slope, come up with an equation by going y minus the y value, which is two, equals the slope, which is two, times x minus the x value. And that's what we would need to come up with an equation here. So if I'm given a point and I'm given the slope, I plug in here for the slope, I plug in the x value of the point, the y value of the point, and I can come up with an equation. y minus two equals, that becomes x plus four, two x plus eight. If I add two, y equals two x plus 10, which means this line is gonna go up and hit at 10. That's my starting value, that's my initial value. That's my y-intercept. So if I kept going, nah, 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 boom, it hits 10. Two is a positive number. Two is a positive number. Positive slopes go uphill. All right, so I'm going to pause it, the recording. I want you to work on the next three. Just work on them on your own. Then we'll take a look at them. All right, so I started to scribble some stuff down. Hopefully you got to work on it a little bit. Again, I'm using this thing called the point slope formula. And if I'm given a point and I'm given the slope, I can come up with the equation. Might not be a graph or whatever. So y minus zero equals slope times. And guess what, folks? Where does this come from? This y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. Where does it come from? Watch this. I'm going to divide both sides by this. X minus X1. And I get Y minus Y1 over X minus X1 equals. Hey, that's my slope formula. That's right. That's right. This isn't some crazy invention here. Y minus or where the hell did that come from? Well, it's just a slope. I divide by both sides by that, and I get my formula for slope, change in y over to change in x. All right, so let's see, here I have y minus zero equals slope times x minus five. That works out nice. I get this equation right here. My slope is negative, so it's going downhill. My intercept is gonna be up here at three and one third. But if I do a quick graph, I go over five, and up zero, I did zero, five, don't tell anybody. And then my slope is down two over three, one, two, three. And then if I graph that, yeah, it better go up through that y-intercept point for me. Questions? Okay. I have two points, but I can't use a point slope formula yet because I don't have the slope. And again, hopefully some of you are saying, oh yeah, if I swing that over. That's the formula we're using today. But I need to find a slope. Somebody give me a slope. What's the slope? I wait. Negative five. I hear a negative five. Thank you. So if I do Y minus Y, the order is important negative one minus negative two, I get negative five over negative one plus two. Very good, I like the negative five. So I need to find a formula. I pick either point, because both points are gonna be on the line. I might as well just go with the first one. 
y minus negative four equals slope times x minus negative one. y plus four, negative five times x plus one, negative five x minus five, y equals negative five x minus nine. So now I want to graph it. I can use the two points. So I need to determine a line. Negative one, one, two, three, four. My second point was negative two, positive one. Negative two, positive one is there. So I'm looking at something like that. Let's see if the other piece, yeah, sorry, it bent a little bit. The other pieces check out. The slope's negative, so it goes downhill. It looks like it would cross the axis at negative nine. Yeah, well, if we had a bigger graph and it went down that way, that's definitely what it would happen. If I put um, zero in for y, uh, that's negative, oh boy, negative nine fifths. Yeah, that looks about right as well. Okay. Coming over this one, passes through the point two three. I got that. But the slope is undefined. No, so, okay. So earlier I was doing slope. This is what we did uh, last Thursday. Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And we had two answers that were important. One was when I had like zero over six, that meant the slope equals zero. And the other one was when I had something like six over zero, equal to slope, and we said that that was undefined, not allowed to divide by zero. So which one is the undefined? It's the second one, and it's when the x's would be the same. So if I have a point two, three, and the x's are gonna be the same, I would need another point like two, two. So if I'm gonna graph this line, with an undefined slope, it would look something like that, okay? An undefined slope is when the zero or the x's are the same, that gives me a divide by zero kind of thing, okay? So I need an equation for that. Anybody get it? Yeah, anybody? I had the point two, two. I have the point two, three. I would have the point two, four. What do I know about all of those ordered pairs? And every single one of them, X equals two. Hopefully if you knew that, you're giving yourself a pat on the back. Good job, me. Where did you get that? Uh, where did you get that zero by six? I made this up. This is from what we learned last week. Uh -huh. If I have if I have a slope and I do the calculation, uh -huh. and it's something that looks like this, where there's well, I, I could have made this sixty one or I could have made this sixteen, but I'm talking. Oh, about, any number. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Okay, that's why I was confused. I saw six and there is no six on the question. Right. Right. Okay. Yep. That was okay. a, an in general side note. Okay. Thank okay. you. You're welcome. Okay. So now we move on. Building blocks, because some of you are going, oh my goodness, why do we need to know about parallel lines and perpendicular lines? And because in future math courses, and some of you don't have to take any after this, but uh, this becomes really important. And the basics of it, and again, I, I think. Most of you have had this recently, or you've at least had it in high school in like algebra two or something, but I'm taking a look at parallel lines. Parallel lines simply mean the slopes are the same. Okay. Perpendicular lines, the slopes are the opposite reciprocal. I say four, you would say negative one fourth. I say 
Oh, I say I banged my camera. If I said negative three halves, the negative reciprocal of that would be positive two thirds. Okay, it's the opposite reciprocal. Positives become negatives and we flip them. Okay, so here's some quick examples of this. Find the slope of the given line. Well, that's kind of what we were just doing a second ago. And we can rip right through these negative three eighths, eight thirds, 20, negative one over 20, zero, undefined. Okay, give the equation of a line that passes through negative one, two, and is parallel to the line. Oh, it'd be a little tricky, son of a, I'm gonna get this in the form that I want. Now it's in this, the slope intercept. Right now, negative three is not the slope. In fact, coming out of here, the slope is going to be positive three. Uh, look at this one. Given the equation of a line that passes through 6, 8 and is perpendicular to that. Well, I, I need to, yeah, 2y equals negative 5x plus 10. y equals negative 5x over 2 plus 5. Now I have the slope here is negative 5 halves. So if I want a line parallel, I'm going to use the same slope. If I want a line perpendicular, I'm going to use the negative reciprocal. I'm going to become positive two fifths. And now we're back to where we were 10 minutes ago, coming up with the equations of lines. Pausing the recording, give you a couple of seconds to work on that. Anybody have an answer for number eight? I'll give you a few more seconds then. Macy, do you have an answer for number eight? No? Macy's not even there? She must have signed in and left. Macy, Ryan, do you have an answer for number eight? Uh, y minus two equals three X plus one. Y minus two equals three times X minus and plus one. Yep. Did you keep going to get it down simpler? No, that's that's all I left it at. But... Okay. So this is Y minus two equals three X plus three. And if I add two, three X plus five. Okie doke. Um, let's see. Kaylee. What'd you have for number nine? I had y minus eight equals two fifths times x minus six. And then what? Did you go further than that? Um, no, I was trying to solve it. Okay. Y minus eight equals two x over five minus 12 over five. Mm-mm. I can add eight to both sides. Y equals two X over five minus 12 over five. If I get ready to write plus eight, I know I wanna change it to fifths. Eight is gonna be 40 fifths. Final answer, Y equals two X over five plus, 28 over five. That look good, Kaylee? Yeah. Yeah. You would just agree with anything, right? You should have learned the first few days of class. I'm full of errors. 
All right, now this is good. Now we're getting into something good. Enough of this Y and X crap. Let's get into something that's gonna work a little bit better for us. A local hardware store charges $28 to rent a carpet cleaning machine for 24 hours and $10.98 for each medium-sized bottle of rug shampoo. Write a linear function S that represents the cost of running the machine for X days along with two bottles of rug shampoo. So we don't know how many days, right? But we know it's two bottles of rug shampoo. So I'm gonna say the cost is gonna equal what? How much do, do the two bottles of rug shampoo cost? $21.96. Excellent. $21.96 plus, and this is my favorite Y equals B plus MX plus, so we know we're paying this no matter what. And then we're going to be paying 28. 28. Yeah, 28 times the number of days. How did you, um, how'd you get 21.96, Professor? How much is one bottle? $28? No, 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 no. That's that's how much it costs to rent the machine each day. Oh, okay. So that's why here, if I knew the number of days, I'm going to multiply it by 28. Okay. I do know that there's going to be two bottles of shampoo bought. So that's like a flat cost. So it's 1098 times two. That, that's that's yeah. how we got the one. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. Still waking up here. Apologize. No, 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 no. I, I appreciate people asking questions. I beg for questions. Okay. So again, this is my Y equals MX plus B kind of thing. But I know it's going to cost me this plus $28, depending on the number of days. So when my graph comes out, I know this right here is going to be $21.96. And then after the first day, I would add 28, add 28, add 28. And that's why I like to talk about the initial cost plus the rate of change. How much am I adding each day? Now, they want us to write it as a function in terms of S and X. So what they're saying is, oh, we want this because it's confusing. 21.96 plus 28 times X. I like the first one better. All right, so if they rent the machine for two days, plug two in, multiply it by, so S of two, yeah, okay, 2196 plus 28 times two. 2196 plus 56, 8796. So now you're thinking, I have to move all the furniture, do all of the work, run to the grocery store, pick up the machine, get the bottles, do all of that, or I hire Stanley Steamer to come in for 100 hours for one room. In uh, probably half a day. Okay. And is, again, that a, yep. is, that, is that supposed to be 77.96? Yeah. I did it wrong on purpose to see if anyone was paying attention. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, last page, because at the bottom of the page is where we did that thing with creating a, a linear regression. Okay, so another type of word problem or real life problem, I don't know, word problem, there's just a lot of words in it. Um, a linear cost function models the cost to produce an item. Okay, uh, you, you know, and oh, oh boy, uh, this is one of those things where you know I buy the machine for five hundred dollars, and to, to make an item it costs fifty cents for each widget, kind of deal. So that's my cost. 
you know, and it's some kind of linear equation like that. I had to buy $500 to buy the machine, you know, and so on to, to make widgets or to make t-shirts. And, you know, so some kind of equation for my cost. Well, my revenue, which is the next one is, when I sell those widgets, I sell them, for example, at $6 a piece, $6 for every widget. So I know I have this cost and at some point I need to sell a lot of widgets to cover that so that I can start making some money. So right now I have a cost. I have the money coming in, my revenue. And at some point I'm gonna hopefully get a P, the P word, yeah, a profit. So we get to talking about cost, revenue, and then the profit is when the revenue is greater than the cost. Okay, any questions on that to get started? Okay. Alina is starting a summer business power washing home, driveways, and sidewalks. Good for her. She will charge $35 to pressure wash the driveway and the sidewalk. Okay. Her startup costs were $330 to get started and a fee of $2 per house she must pay to the homeowners association for the water of each hose. Okay, there goes that, you know, what I was, her, her cost was going to be, what was her initial cost? How much did it cost her to buy the power washer? $330. Yeah, $330. And then it's going to be $2 for every house. So, yeah, I'm allowed to use words. You know, it's a lot of people in math, they start seeing X's and Y's and they go crazy. So, you know, if, if she does 10 houses, uh, it costs her $350 to do 10 houses. Now, she's going to start bringing money in. This is that second part we were talking about, the revenue. How much does she make for every driveway that she pressure washes? Oh, that's $35. $35 times every house that she does. Okay. So let's see. This first equation is 300 Plus, so really, we, we could say this is the number of houses down here instead of X's and Y's. So here's the $330 to get her started. And then every house she does, you know, it goes up slightly. It only costs her $2. Okay. Well, here's her revenue. If she does zero houses, she gets it. So this is, in, as far as equations go, y equals 35x. This, as far as equations go, would be y equals 330 plus 2x. Okay. So this one is steep, has the higher slope. This one is a little more flat. It has a smaller slope. What's this point right here? What's this point right there? Right there, right there. What's that point right there? That would, would that be like when she breaks even? Excellent. Like when she breaks the Excellent. Money she spent. Yep, that's her break even point. And it looks like from my graph, her break even point is going to be at. Well, that's 50, 40, 30, 20, 10. That's a 10. If she does 10 houses, she's going to break even. Well, she better be doing a lot more than 10 so she can make money. So everything above 10 is profit. Realistically, none of this should exist, should it? It's graphed as a line, but it shouldn't exist. She's never going to do negative houses. So as far as letting the author know what we think about that, 
We'd have to tell him that. All right. So write a linear function. Oh boy. Write a linear cost function for pressure washing X houses. Oh, we did that already, right? Cost equals 330 plus two times every house. And again, they, they love X here and they love F of X. And that's just to get it on a graph. But we don't need, we don't need that. We can call this house. We can call this dollars. Revenue function. We said that as well. The revenue is going to be $35 times the number of houses. Hopefully this is more interesting than the other stuff we've been doing. Write a profit function. Well, the profit was going to be when I started making money. And that was when my revenue was greater than cost. So that's going to be 35 times house minus 330 plus two times the number of houses. How do you spell house? Am I spelling it right? Yes. The more I look, it's one of the things, the more I look at it, it looks funky. I could clean this up if I wanted to. You know, I could rewrite this as 35H minus 2H would really be 33 times the number of houses minus 330. I can make it a little smaller. All right, so if she washes 15 houses, gonna plug it in. 33 times 15 minus 330. Tiny my calculator. Hey Siri, what's 33 times 15? 33 times 15 is 495. Hey Siri. What? Never mind. I don't have to rely on Siri. I was good at Rocket Man. <laughs> so if she washes 15 houses, she'll make 160 bucks. Well, it's only going to get better from there because you see how this is going up and that's my revenue. And when I subtract the profits, which are leveling out, I'm going to start making more and more and more money up through there. How many homes will she have to wash to make $330? So that's, I need a profit of 330 equals 33 times house minus 330. How many homes must she power wash to profit? There's my profit. Add 330. Divide by 33. Wouldn't D be 165? Well, let's see. D is 165. Yeah. Thank you for paying attention. Huh. 165 what? Dollars. We need to get in the habit of putting labels in there. Thank you. And down here, I 20 houses. I need $330 to buy a new Xbox. I need to do 20 houses. There's a lot of good stuff in that problem number 11. I like it. I like it. Questions? All 
All right, well, we actually have finished 2.5, and according to my schedule, that's all we needed to cover today. And I don't really want to start 2.6 just yet, so we are going to stop there. What do you think about that?